Now we want to, det to determine if the converse is true or false. So remember the converse we have is if you are an athlete, then you are a swimmer. We assume the hypothesis to be true, that you are an athlete. Does that necessarily mean you are a swimmer? We see that it does not because a football player or a soccer player or a runner are all athletes, but they are not swimmers. So the converse is false. Next, we look at the inverse. Remember, the inverse keeps the hypothesis and the conclusion in the same positions. It just negates both of them. So we now have if you are not a swimmer, then you are not an athlete. Where you are not a swimmer is our hypothesis, and you are not an athlete is our conclusion. Again, we assume the hypothesis to be true, that you are not a swimmer. Does that mean that you are not an athlete? And we can see that it doesn't necessarily mean that you are not an athlete. If someone's not a swimmer, again, they can be a runner, they can be a football player, they can be a soccer player, and that would mean that they're still an athlete. So the inverse is also false. Lastly, let's look at the contrapositive. Remember, the contrapositive is a mix of the converse and the inverse. It flips the roles of hypothesis and conclusion and negates them both, which means we have if you are not an athlete, then you are not a swimmer. Where you are not an athlete is the hypothesis, and you are not a swimmer is the conclusion. Let's assume the hypothesis is true. You are not an athlete. Does that mean that you are not a swimmer? We see it does. Because if you are not an athlete, there's no way you can be a swimmer, since swimmers are athletes. For practice on your own and to talk about in class tomorrow, go ahead and take this statement. If you are an artist, then you know, or how about then you can paint well. For tomorrow, rewrite the original conditional statement, determine if it's true or false, and then write the three related conditional statements, determining whether those are true or false. And we'll talk about first thing in class. The last topic I want to address are biconditional statements. A biconditional statement is a statement that goes in both directions, whereas a conditional statement only goes in one direction. You want to look for the words if and only if. For example, you have money if and only if you can buy a movie ticket. This is logically equivalent to both of the following, that if you have money, then you can buy a movie ticket, and if you can buy a movie ticket, then you have money. A biconditional statement we might see in this class is the angle A is 40 degrees if and only if, and this should be measure, its complement. is 50 degrees, which means if measure of angle A is 40 degrees, its complement is 50, and if its complement is 50, then the measure of angle A is 40.